this TV has won the engine rod four times in a row. That's pretty good. So let's take a second and watch from the best how much thinking goes into getting a sled ready for the Iditarod from Dallas himself. One more handy thing about this sled is it's designed for traveling long distances and carrying the equipment to do that. Once we have everything packed down, kind of notice how there's kind of a divot right here and the stuff ramps up in the front. But in the front, all we have is an empty cooker, a sleeping bag, some booties, and some mail wraps. Those there's a lot of bulk, there's hardly any weight up there. So if I need to camp before I reach the next checkpoint, I'm going to need to take straw with me. And it really doesn't fit inside the sled bag all that well. But the sled is just the right width. So usually when I get to a checkpoint, I'll cut that bale in half, or if I'm going a short distance, I might take the whole thing and set it right here. I slam it pretty hard, and I usually unzip these just a little bit, so this falls down even more. And it sets right in there, these bars kind of pinch it in there, and then I can come to the front and shove it back, and it should sit right about there, held in by these bars. Then I have one long line that I use for tying out the lead dogs while camping, and it goes all the way around the bale of straw, right underneath the bed of the sled, and all the way back up to a half inch, tighten it down, and it's on there. And I can usually load a bale of straw in less than two minutes. Dallas talks about what you need for this long journey and how to do it. It is great for your dogs to have hay in case that they get really tired in the middle of the night. It is great for you to have food handy along with extra supplies. These tips that he gives you will help you finish to know. Have you ever wondered what materials make up an idea rod sled and how the mushers make the sleds go so fast that it looks like they're literally gliding on top of the ice? If so, let's find out how these sleds are able to glide on ice and hold the mushers on top while they race through the Alaskan wilderness. The sled? Uh, like Linda's, this is a pretty, this is a pretty, uh, futurist, well, it's not futuristic anymore, but, um, this is, uh, Actually, Doug Swingley's, one of his spare sleds from Adirod last year, and he never used it in Adirod. I used it last year in Adirod. Uh, he has a sled that's very similar. He and Eric Pack and Jason Barron sort of worked on a the sled design. It's carbon fiber Kevlar. So, it's uh, Lindis' ash. A little older style in terms of the materials, you know. But just like anything else, it's getting to be... This is nice. It's getting to be, you know, more carbon and Kevlar and that sort of thing. And uh, This only has one stanchion and a knee joint. You see, it's kind of a pretty different look to it. And it has this ergo... Sort of an ergo-shaped uh, handlebars. That's pretty traditional. And this has sort of fits your wrist better and that sort of thing. What's the stanchion part? Uh, right here. The, sort of the, the angled vertical brace. Uh, the, the driving bow or handlebar. Uh, this part right here. See how different it is? How this is shaped. It looks pretty weird when you look at it at first. These sleds play a huge role in the Idid Rod and help the mushers reach Snome in no time. There are many types of animals in the Idid Rod. There is a moose, wolf, rabbit, but the most seen are dogs. This is a video of a moose on the trail. Many animals are found on the trail, but not all of them are friendly. The next video is Jason Mackey, Dog Care. So the hand warmers that we normally use, we also use them on the dogs. And we get these, not, nothing special, it's a shoulder vest that 
have pockets built on the inside. And it's like a quarterback keeping their shoulders and arms warm, you know. When they go to the bench, they, uh, they automatically keep their throwing arm warm. Well, same with the dogs. So we put hand warmers on here. For myself, I don't use many hand warmers. This guy here, he actually is just, he was just coming sore, coming into Nikolai, and I seen it. So I rubbed him down, put this on him, and Nikolai, and then he got to ride all the way here in the sled. I made a nice, comfortable bed for him in there. So he rode for, he rode from Nikolai to here, and so he'll have a 31 hour layover. Instead of 24, huh? This is Tide, and um, he is the heart and soul of this dog team, this little guy. I call him the biggest little dog in the state. He is he's the littlest dog I own, but he makes up for, he's amazing. Hmm? Yeah. Daddy boy. Hmm? You're a daddy boy. You know, these dogs, the people that don't know or don't get the opportunity to see what we do with these dogs, it's just like our kids. I mean, if your kid feels bad, you take them to the doctor, you sit in a room with them while they, you know, get medicine in them and just love on them and be a parent. That's the same with these dogs. As you can tell, they're very affectionate. We're very affectionate to them and... Without them, we wouldn't get to do what we do. You you can see how mushers really like their dogs, and they care for them like they were their children. But the next video is about where they get sent if they are hurt. Hi, I'm Dr. Dean Bauman from Newport, Oregon. And this is my ninth year as a veterinarian working on the Iditarod sled dog race. It's been quite an experience over what I see on a normal daily basis. Dogs can't run a mile or two and these are running a hundred miles a day. The main purpose of the drop dogs in Anchorage is to follow up and care for the dogs that the mushers left on the trail. The trail veterinarians take care of them, treat them, and then we follow up with the treatment when they come into Anchorage. Most of the ones that are dropped are lameness related problems, pulled muscles, shoulders, wrists, etc. It's nice to watch them come in and as they run coming in you can see if one's bobbing its head or limping or something, checking them for harness rubs, uh, checking them for lameness. And at every checkpoint we listen to heart, lungs, we check their appetite, their attitude, their weight and we have a regimen that goes down. All of them are really good. There's a lot of return veterinarians because it is an infectious sport. You really get turned on by it and it's uh, something you want to come up and do. It takes a lot of, of your own time and money and effort to come and do this. Like I say, you're not in it for the money. Uh, you're up here for volunteers and we have a very good volunteer staff too. Uh, they're all enthusiastic. Dogs are not only good racing dogs, but are good friends. This next video is about dog therapy. Well, we have a really good relationship with the Highland Correctional Facility out north of town uh, that maintains and cares for our dogs that are waiting to be picked up by the mushers. And uh, the women inmates at this uh, correctional facility really do a super job. They're very compassionate, very caring. Uh, they really care for the dog over there. If we have any medication to give, they take care of that for us. And we're very fortunate to have them to take care of. Uh, some of them are picked up the same day, but normally about 48 hours, sometimes 72. But we really, they really do a good job. Nice thing to see them reacting with the dogs. I'm certain they enjoy it too, to break from their daily routine. There is a lot to be said about dogs, um, not just for like a mental health aspect, but definitely for recovery and substance abuse as well, how therapeutic they can be, just working with them and being around them like that all the time. Like this little girl right here. 
and I just feel happier. My, my time is going by a lot faster, which is always great. And um, I don't know, it's real therapeutic, I think, working with the animals, too. I'm so thankful that they're willing to work with us on doing this because it's a win-win situation, not just for the dogs, but for the inmates, too. But as we know, there are predators in Alaska. Here is a video of a of a bear caught hunting for salmon in Alaska. So remember, there are many types of animals that are in Alaska that are all around the world. Thank you. There are many different breeds of dogs that mushers use to reach Nome and the Iditarod. So, let's take a look at their different abilities. dogs has a different job. Those sprint dogs that you saw down at the fur rendezvous, those dogs go as fast as they can go for 16 miles. Most of the time when people are thinking huskies, they're thinking the big freaking Malamute or the Siberian Huskies, which are AKC breeds. For true competitive uh, speed mushing, technically uh, it's the breed, the uh, fast running dog, the fast running dog. And there's kind of been an evolution, actually, back in the 60s, 70s, there, um, there was a little Saluki in there, a little Irish Sutter, um, lots of breeds, and that was actually called the Aurora Husky for a while. When Echo Ellis came in the late 80s from uh, Europe, he brought with him what they call the Ural Hound. What it did is it brought in a lot shorter coats, it brought in a little longer leg, a little bigger dog on there, and uh, basically the year he came, he won the world championship, so now you're seeing a lot more of that bred in, so these dogs look a lot houndier. The dogs at Denali National Park are more freighting dog, they're a bigger dog, they're a heavier dog, more Malamute style. Those dogs are hitched up to very long sleds where the rangers will go into the backcountry with those dogs and they might freight equipment into Wonder Lake Cabin or they might freight something out. Those dogs are going to be a lot slower but they will go for a long time. We have more of the traditional style of, of working dog that are more of what you would have seen years ago. These are, we're not crossing anything in like um, any hound or pointer or other things that a lot of the racing mushers are. We're quite a bit slower, um, but we're a lot bigger and they're able to haul more weight and get through deeper snow. A lot of the racing dogs run on a groom trail. These dogs also have a lot of endurance, these Alaskan Huskies. They are built for speed, but they're also built for endurance. They're kind of a combination of both. There are many dogs in the Iditarod, and some of them are lightning fast. So, let's figure out how the mushers get their dogs to become so fast. One of the crazy things that takes place is the Iditarod, a dog sled race across a thousand miles of frozen tundra. It takes a special kind of person to brave the Alaska wilderness, but what about those dogs? After all, they're the ones doing most of the work. Well, according to my friend, an authority on this kind of thing now, the dogs consume 10,000 calories of food each day. And the most popular breed is the Alaskan Husky, of course. A whole lot of genetic engineering went into these puppies. Pick out the tough ones, breed in a little greyhound, and you have a dog that can last the miles and survive the cold. Alaska is home to some crazy conditions and even crazier people. 